Hi, Matt Force here, British watercolour artist. Um, welcome to uh, my YouTube channel. Very briefly, if you want to learn how to paint watercolour, you come to the right place. So, watch these videos. In this video, I'm going to do now, I'm going to show you the most simple thing you can do with a watercolour um, painting, which is a graded wash. Now, here we are, mixed up a colour, it's just a purple using French Ultramarine and uh, Elizabeth Crimson. So this is the colour I've mixed in here and here it is neat in a syringe Then what I've done is watered it down to a different tone which is this colour here and that's going to be the first tone I'm going to start with and then what I'm going to do is add the darker colour into the lighter colour here with each successive wash. I'm going to do a little picture over four or five washes but the first thing I'm going to do is just show you a graded wash. So here we are now in my hand I have my paint, I have a brush obviously um, this is a size 20, six, sorry size 16 brush try and use as big a brush as you can um, when you're painting something like this um, just to cover the ground quickly. This paper is stretched, obviously, I'm not going into that now, but you don't paint watercolour on paper that isn't stretched. Now here we have the board at an angle, I've got a quite um, sort of different drawing board, so I can put it any angle I want, but that's probably about 30 degrees. Anyway, here we go. So, what you need to do is load the brush up. Now you can see I've got a lot of paint on this brush there. And all I'm doing is letting the water just fall down. Whoops. See, I'm not going to catch that back up. I'm not going to take that off, I'm just going to catch it up before it goes dry. And you just keep going, and you just let the paint fall down. See this line here? With this particular sediment, I've probably got about 10 seconds, 15 seconds before that makes a mark on the paper. You have to keep this moving all the time. Down and down, dead easy. So this should end up all in one tone. <clears throat> now you notice another thing, it might seem like a de detail, it's just the angle of the brush is, I'm using it parallel to the paper. So I'm not doing this, well I mean you could, but it's not best practice, right? It's just this. And it means I can see the paper. And I'm gonna I've actually drawn something up here for to continue this demonstration. So I'm just drawing to a line there. And there. And there and then I'm gonna carry on with my wash. What I'm doing here is, uh, will make sense at the end of the demonstration. It's just getting my line back to an even line as fast as possible. Okay. And what I've got here is a slight build up of paint there. So look, I've got a piece of paper towel in my hand. And I just um, take the excess off and just run my brush. I'll try and do it left handed so you can see better. Um, along the top there and it's just going to um, soak up that paint. That has to be done pretty quickly. Alright, and I'll dry that up now. So that was the tone we've just put on. This is the, the mix I've got in my syringe here. Okay, which I'm just going to put into the, the, the tone we've just had. So, let's have a look.
Oh, that should do it. So mix that up. There we go. I'm going to put it on. Okay, I've just swapped sides here, although we've got a great big shadow coming from the uh, camera, but anyway, never mind. Okay, so I'm using a slightly smaller brush now because I'm not covering such a big area. I've um, dried up my paper, so now I'm putting another tone on, the second one. I'll go through these tones at the end. And what I'm trying to do straight away is establish um, it's a little mountain in the background, it'll all make sense at the end. Establish my graded wash again. So I've painted my shape, now I'm just back to a line. Look at all that excess paint, perfect, it's just what you want. You can never have too much paint, sort of. Follow that line again. And I'm coming down here. Um, I'm just going to deviate from my plan a little bit here. Always try and think when I'm doing these videos, I can keep it really simple and end up putting loads of stuff in. But I'm just going to do that, and you will see why later. Okay, so I'm back to my wash there again. I'm just going to bring that down. See, I'm not even putting any paint on. Just keep it going. Just let the paint fall. I'm not pressing too hard, otherwise you'll be lifting the previous layer of paint off. Look, all of that and get that nearly the whole way. Again, I'm um, just going to take off that excess. <clears throat> okay, let's wash. See, I should never have done that. Cheating. It's always go the same way. So here we are on the third wash. I've added once more to my mixture, mixture to my paint. Um, so always darker. I mean, I think with a simple kind of tonal situation like this. This is going to be what one, two, three, four, five tones. Probably get about fifteen percent darker each time would be accurate. You can't sort of go just a tiny, tiny bit darker because what ends up happening is you actually just end up lifting the previous wash of paint off the uh, paper. There has to be a sort of significant step, a significant tonal change. Just run that line again. And down here. So what I'm always trying to do is keep everything moving along. Keep the paint moving and then just establish a flat wash line again. I'm just taking that off. Whoops, a bit slow there. It's all, all going, to, going badly wrong. Okay, and then just wash that down. I'm actually just decided to do something very quickly here. Um, that was wash number four, which I've just put on the bottom. So I'm just going to. Uh, Put a couple of clouds up here, sort of in the sky, and I'll explain why I'm doing this shortly at the end of the video. All right, um, so I'll just dry those up. So, <clears throat> all right. Um, on the foreground here, I'm just going to put in that final wash. This is wash number one, two, three, four. I think it's wash number five. C 
see what will happen is you just kind of get a feel for the paint this is becoming a bit thick quite viscous it just starts to group a little bit can you see the way this is falling down now it's just not moving the liquid that it's becoming a bit more viscous it's just not moving in the same way it did on the first wash which is a sign you're kind of reaching the end of your tonal limit without really sort of plastering it on or removing the previous layer of paint so that's the foreground just go right back up to the sky in this even darker tone and just alter something up here change my mind I'm just going to go over this cloud again and you'll see why in a moment when I do my school teacher act. Alright, so that's it. I'm not going to touch that painting anymore. So I just wanted to take, so let's just take a quick look at what's happening here. I've clearly scribbled all over the uh, Painting, let's look at the washes, okay, first wash, in theory, always, is the white paper, which has a tonal value of nothing, okay, so we've got the first wash we've put on, here, it's wash number one, with a tonal value of one, we've got the second wash, which on its own has a tonal value of two, put on the first wash, has a combined tonal value of three. So when we put on wash number 3 with a tonal value of 3, when added to the first and second wash, gets a tonal value of 6 in here. Okay. The fourth wash with a tonal value of 4, when added on to the, the, the three previous washes, gives us this tone. So this has a tonal value of 10. It is 10 times as dark as that. 9 times. It's 10 times as dark as that. The fifth wash, tonal value of 5, when added to all the four previous washes, gives us a tonal value of 15. Okay? But I did two other things here with the clouds, right? I put the fourth wash here on top of the first wash, which gives us a tonal value of 5, 5 plus 1. Okay? So this tone here is somewhere in between these two. It looks darker because it's just surrounded by a lighter colour. And then I put another wash on, 5 plus 1 is 6. So this tone here is darker than that. That's the same. That's the 6 there, and that's the 5, because it's 4 plus 1, 5 plus 1. So we've got a slight gradient going on there. Then I've got this cloud here, where I put wash number 1, wash number 4, so it makes 5. Then I put the, the 5 on top. So 5 plus 4 plus 1, we've got a tonal value of 10 on that cloud. Okay, so we've got about 8 different tonal values coming off um, 5 washes. In theory, I think, uh, that just gets much more complicated, I think in theory you can get 24 tonal values off 5 washes. Um, but there we've just got a few. So I hope that makes sense. Um, you know, there's so many different things you could do. You could take that drawing and just oh you could you could you could go to town with it you could do so many different ideas just by layering just by the different ways you're putting on washes um, you know you could leave the whole of the sky white you could leave sections of the house white you could leave sections in here white and, and come back over them it gets too complicated I'm trying to keep it simple um, and not helping alright I hope that helps